It's simple, it's sleek, and it's kind of sneaky. Good afternoon, morning, welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the 4 Pins Financial Weekly Triple XL. We have the Lenovo G25-20 on review today. Well, actually, I've been using it for a couple of days. And it's a sneaky way to bring back an old technology because it's honestly better than some of the new technology. Anyway, I'm being very divisive because I want to speak about it later in the review. Let's start off with what's in the box. Do you ever get a monitor, hopefully, and you get a very nice little kettle plug and a very nice display port cable with little clippies on either end, which we absolutely love so that it's not going to fall out of the socket on the motherboard or on the motherboard. Don't plug it into your motherboard. On the GPU or, or on the monitor itself. Moving around the back, you're going to notice a very familiar design. This brings me back to LG M72 era, and that's basically kind of what we have over here but with some upgrades and updates anyway the stand the base of it is a nice big b pattern and it's got very very good stability it's plastic and it's nicely finished the blue accents are always welcome just to make you know that it's a lenovo product the travel on this neck though is quite extreme it goes through more than 130 millimeters worth of travel from bottom to top it's got extreme travel on that on that front and the tilt as well it goes from minus 5 to 22 degrees positive so yeah it's very very good as far as that goes there's no swivel on this neck however which would have been nice especially with this big v kind of pattern and the smaller size you might want to get a little bit closer to the monitor so it's going to limit you in that facet if we look around the bottom at the ports setup we've got on the far left the kettle plug input and then dual hdmi with a display port and then a pass through for 3.5 more audio so now nice standard default as well on that front and then the, that standard vase amount so that if you want to use a desk arm then you're going to be sorted with that albeit i would say this stand has some of the best travel around so if you're a very very tall person and you need something that can look up at you as an example i don't think you'll be too tall for this monitor which is a very big plus the OSD on the screen is a little bit of an antiquated style. It's all buttons on the bottom right, which is a very good old kind of default once again as well. And that's what I think they were going for in general with this, which is to make a good old default. It has all of the default settings. The uh, response time is called override for whatever reason, but level four is true one millisecond response time. And having tested it, I can tell you it is true one millisecond response time. And that's where we get to the interesting part of this monitor. This is a TN panel. Unlike a lot of the entry-level gaming monitors these days, which have gone in the VA direction, Lenovo decided to bring back TN. And I'm kind of glad they did. Because when I first started using this, I thought it was a VA. And I was like, oh, they've sorted out the smear. You know, it's a good old TN. This is literally the LG M72 from yesteryear, but now at 165 hertz. So it's a good solid standard esports monitor you don't have to pay the premium for the ips stuff so at the at the price point it's not really that aggressive right now um and i can only think that Chandler maybe got nicked by some uh you know good old rate of exchange increases or something like that but in general i think these are going to go for about four thousand rand with a tn panel which is absolutely fantastic so you get that no smear to one millisecond response time hopefully add a bit of a budget or a bit of a discount because the VA, especially on 1080p, does tend to smear quite a lot. Um, and that's just, it's just the way that it works. VA stands for vertical alignment. You've got IPS, in-plane switching, and you've got TN. And all of them have their advantages and disadvantages. But in general, TN and IPS give the better res pixel response times, how fast the pixel can actually move out of the way to let light through. And so this being a TN, it doesn't have that VA smear issue, which I think was a bit of a master play from them, especially for one of their first gaming monitors. I think it was a better and safer choice. Considering everything else is a little bit more standard, you would expect the price to be a little bit more aggressive and hopefully we'll see some specials with that on the eTech store. But there's nothing really at this price point that still has TN. Everything else is VA. So it, it puts itself actually in a niche where it's basically there has no competition unless there's an IPS at the same kind of price point 
you're not really going to go one tick. And the fact that I can set the saturation directly on the panel itself, which this now has a 20% boost to its saturation, it then becomes much like a VA. It doesn't have quite as good contrast ratio, which is just a default with that. All the viewing angles, you are going to have to be a little bit more dead on. I'd say you probably get to about 100 degree of a comfortable viewing angle. And then there's that T and sheen that it sort of creates with that. And then IPS, once again, is kind of the pinnacle of the technology and that has its own issues with IPS glow. So I like it. I like what they've done. I think it was a very clever and sneaky way to jump into the market of monitors, which is extremely competitive, uh, especially here in South Africa. There's a lot of brands. There's two really big ones that are kind of vying in this space and especially this entry level esports gaming kind of space. Yeah, and they don't have anything that's comparable to this. So I think it was very clever, and especially to introduce it to South Africa. You've done a good job, Lenovo. I'm kind of impressed. What I would like to see, however, is just take the controls and put it on a joystick, like on the bottom right. We much prefer that these days. It is a much better way to do your OSD. The OSD itself is fine. The way it looks and feels is no problem. And I would like some tilt or some swivel, at least, on the on this piece. Um, if you, I would say do it on the base stand over here, just so that I can swivel it over and get put my keyboard into the V like that so that it's at that angle and then turn the monitor straight as it were. Then it's gonna be pretty much perfect. Then you've got like a literal esports like ready kind of setup over here. Anywho, that's all I have for you on this G25-20. If you have enjoyed it, please hit us up with a like and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side.